Okay, in chapter six, we talk about distance measurement. We talk about uh, what it is we need to, you know, how how the process works, and and not only just using a tape measure anymore, but it gets to a point of using an electronic distance measuring uh, instrument, uh, what we call an EDM. That was kind of the beginnings in, of changing the world, where we didn't have to use a chain, didn't have to use a steel tape or a tape measure or um, anything you could think of to try and measure something. This was the time that we finally got to a point now where we could start measuring long distances or short distances, but by using light, by using uh, uh, wavelength technology to be able to figure out exactly what's going on. So historically, we talk about that. Pacing that can get you to be with accuracies of uh, 1 in 100. Uh, using an odometer, that's a wheel that you push around. You can get as close as about 1 in 200. Um, optical range finders, uh, where it uses focusing and changing, you know, figuring out what the focal length is right there. You can get to be about 1 in, one in 50, so not perfect, but good. Uh, tachyometry, that's uh, using Stadia. Uh, we didn't go over Stadia, but it's another method that could be used to, to get you pretty accurate distances, and that was about 1 in 500 you could do. Subtense bars, um, it's basically kind of talking of indirect measurements to be able to do that. You can come up to 1 in 3,000. So you can see we're getting better as, the, as time uh, moved on to be able to figure this out. Taping uh, is another one. Uh, you can get pretty accurate, really accurate short distances, not as accurate as you go in long distances. Then we get to EDM, electronic distance measurement. This is where it really starts getting very, very precise. And then last thing, satellite uh, systems, yes, getting even more precise. I wouldn't say even more precise, but getting to that same level as, a, as an EDM can get. Of course, satellites, you can go greater distances as opposed to an EDM, which gives you different advantages there. Uh, and last one, too, with, uh, which we'll talk about later, is uh, light detection and ranging, which is LiDAR. So uh, awesome, awesome technology which allows us now to, to make measurements in such short amount of times, which before used to take, take quite a bit of time. So first thing we need to talk about is light propagation. We need to figure out, okay, what, uh, we need to understand the principles, just the basics. I'm not going to get into the details uh, into any uh, physics course to, or waves or optics course right now. But we need to understand a little bit about the basics to, to be able to understand better how an EDM actually works. Uh, so we have v is equal to f times lambda, which uh, you should be familiar with to know that uh, v is the velocity of uh, electromagnetic energy, and that's measured in meters per second. Uh, we have v in a vacuum, uh, that's you know speed of light. Uh, wavelength, wavelength will measure that one in meters. That's just the the, uh, the nature of the wave as you go on like this. So the distance from this point to the point where it repeats right there represents your wavelength. In F, that is your frequency, and we'll say it's your modulated frequency of energy, and it's measured in hertz, and hertz is measured as one cycle per second. Or if you're talking uh, a nice little wave right here, it's one cycle from here to where you start again. <clears throat> okay, now we also know that V is equal to C over N. So velocity of electromagnetic energy is equal to C, which is the speed of light, over N. Again, V, we know that. C, speed of light, we said that uh, in a vacuum. N, then, is the atmospheric index of refraction. That comes into play. It's really important. Uh, you know, and it's a function of pressure and temperature. So we've had a lab that we've kind of discussed about this, of uh, seeing how, uh, how temperature can affect the distance that you measure using an EDM, using a total station. So we can see that everything that, that we talk about here is now going to carry over into how, how things actually, you know, how things really work and how we can utilize light or use the electromagnetic energy uh, to be able to measure then distances. <clears throat> so the first thing we have is we have time of flight. Time of flight technology takes the speed of light. If you know what the speed of light is, so you send a pulse, and then you measure the time for the pulse to return. And the distance is just, is just the speed of light times time divided by two. Divided by two, why? Because it's going down and back. So a real simple method as you do that. The second one we have is what we call phase measurement. 
Okay, phase measurement is this. Here's your, here's your equation. The length, so the distance, is n times lambda plus p over 2. Great. What that really means then, uh, let's figure out, let's uh, give you definition. So L is the length. We'll measure in meters. Lambda is the wavelength, also in, in meters. Uh, the effective wavelength is lambda prime, so that's just a definition we'll talk about. N is the number of full wavelengths, and P is the length of a fractional part. So what that's saying is, we want to know if we send a pulse, and the pulse is going down, hits something, and then that pulse now needs to return. This is where you started from. You can see that we need to know exactly how many, if we knew the exact number of uh, full wavelengths, right, if the wavelength was 10 meters, if we knew the number of full wavelengths, we could then count how many it goes all the way down and how many it comes back. Well, it doesn't end perfectly. So what you have is you have a portion now left over, which is a partial, it's a fractional part. Okay, so if you know then the fractional part then you can be able to compute then your total distances. N times the, so you have your full number of wavelengths plus the fractional part, divide that by two, gives you a distance. So that's the same example that I'm showing right here. You have, uh, you're sending the energy as it's going along this way, and then it returns coming back this way. So again, the, the, the phase portion is that portion of the, the wavelength that we're going to be able to measure. An EDM cannot count the number of full wavelengths. We can't count the number of full wavelengths. We can calculate it, but we're not using time to do so with an EDM. Or you can, but in this instance, as we talk about phase, we're only talking about this type of instrument, this sensor, is only going to be able to measure the phase. You can give very accurate measurements trying to uh, figure it out this way. So let's look at it one more time. You look right here, so here's the phase going down, or your uh, your light energy coming down and then it's just turning this way. So then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and some part, P, number of, uh, number of wavelengths. So that then will give us and tell us what the, uh, you know, take that, divide by two, will give us the overall distance. So let's assume here that uh, our wavelength is 20 meters n is equal to 9, just what we show right here. Now we measure a phase. We measure the phase being 115.7 degrees. And what the phase is, the phase is where it measured, this portion right here. So if you're coming in to a certain point, remember if you start and end, that total, the total change right there, we call that in between, that's 360 degrees. Okay, so wherever you stop, whether it be here, here, and here, it has a certain amount as you're going through there. You know, right, uh, you know, kind of talking about a sine wave again. So at 180 degrees, it hits back zero again, right? Okay, so here's you going through there. So say we're saying it's at 115.7 degrees. So now we know the phase. So if we know the, the wavelength and we know the phase, then we can calculate and come up and compute what a distance is. So let's figure out what L is. So L then, based upon that formula we gave you before, 9 times 20, so that's the number of full light wavelengths times 20 meters, plus we need our, we know our phase, so 115.7 degrees divided by 360, because we want to know a portion of that whole thing. We, know, we need to know ratio, right? Because we want to know that the total distance is 360 degrees, but it's also 20 meters. All right, so we want to know what that ratio is so we can put it in terms of something we can measure. So if we had 9, 9 is unitless times 20 meters. Let's get this then into meters. So this gets to be into meters. So we need to convert that into ratio, an amount of 20, 20 meters. So take that, add those two together, divide by 2, and you end up with your distance. And say that was A and this was B. Now we know that our distance was 93.214. Now as we talk about uh, using effective wavelength, I mentioned that earlier. So here was, a, here was an equation that we had, right, that we just showed you. We used lambda, so lambda was equal to 20. Great. Now what we're going to talk about is using an effective wavelength. So this equation here we can actually simplify. 
So if we take it, we simplify, we get rid of the 2, and now we end up with L is equal to 9 times 10 plus uh, 57.85 over 360. Sorry, that uh, shouldn't have been written like that. It should still say 115.7. It got changed on accident. Anyway, so you take that and you simplify this equation. Now look what we have right here. See this 10 meters right there? That's what we consider to be our, our effective wavelength. All it is is simplifying the equation to not have to use the 2 anymore to divide by 2. Well, if you divide the wavelength by 2 by simplifying, now that wavelength of 10 meters, that becomes our effective wavelength. Because effectively, that's what we're trying to do is just figure out what the distance is. And so we use that. Just kind of definitions as we go through that.